Growing up, I had dreams and aspirations, but always felt like the kid that didn't fit in. For the most part, I wasn't a bad kid, but when I made the transition into adulthood, I turned to the streets for guidance. This led to getting locked up in juvenile hall, doing time in CYA, and eventually a 120 month sentence in federal prison. I had a lot of time to think and reflect during my federal sentence. So I share with you what I learned, hoping I can positively influence someone else's life with Prison Talk. What's up everybody, Big Hurt Prison Talk. Thank you for tuning in to The Real, the realest motherfucking show about prison on the internet and online period. Um, Fresh Out series, Life After Penitentiary, you know, we got multiple videos, multiple interviews, check us out, tell your people to subscribe. Check out our, our Instagram and our Twitter, which is Fresh Out Series. And email us if you got a question at freshoutseries at gmail.com. Check us out also at our website, freshoutseries.com. And, you know, we got hats, we got t-shirts, we got all that good shit. Had a question for one of our viewers. How can I avoid passive aggressive conflicts on the street, such as someone saying something slick or tapping my head with their hand? Uh, you know, slick shit, you know what I mean? Motherfuckers uh, trying to test you, you know, Sometimes I feel like I don't know if I just need to split a wig just to make sure that I still got it in me because, uh, you know, or I, I got like, oh, soft nigga written on my face because some of the shit people do on the street is so fucking disrespectful. You know, it's a shame, man. And I think every now and then a lot of these cats need they motherfucking ass whoop for real. I'm not talking, you know, on no video game. I'm talking physically wig split because, um, you know, I fuck with cars a lot old schools, you know what I'm saying, um, foreigns here and there. And I've dealt with some pieces of shit in the car game. And man, I don't know what it is, man. You know, people try to play you, try to lie to you, tell you anything to get you out their face, but they word ain't shit. Now, if a motherfucker carried like this on the street, I mean, in the hood or even a pen, he'd have been got his wig split. So I don't understand why people act like this you know, and think that there's no type of uh, ramifications behind it. But you got to really focus on just not getting caught up in your emotions and realizing that you have more to, to lose than to gain. You know, there was a guy in particular, he started smarting off in front of another customer when I was at this transmission shop. And I looked at the dude and I really thought about it, man. And I want to choke this motherfucker out. I could have put, I could have, I could have basically broke this motherfucker's neck. You know what I'm saying? But I kind of thought about how far I've gotten. You know, I'm off probation. You know what I'm saying? Do I want to put myself back in that position? Then get my license plate number. You know what I mean? I've done, you know, I didn't have work done here. So they might have my personal phone and address. Cops come. It's assault and battery. You know, I'm going to catch a case. So I kind of just walked away from it, man. You know, at times I feel like, I still want to go by there and split his wig, but I haven't done it because I don't want to catch a case. And I'm not going to incriminate myself by saying I'm going to do it now and then going back and doing it. But, you know, it takes a bigger man sometimes to walk away from a situation and to not use violence rather than to use violence and really not get nowhere. Because, you know, you bust a motherfucker's shit, he sues you, you got to pay for court costs. It's a bunch of bullshit. I had a homeboy that was chilling, mind his own business, went to the bathroom, a motherfucker came in there and kicked him in the ass while he's pissing. Now he turned around and motherfucker said, oh, I thought I knew you. He said, motherfucker, I don't know you. What the fuck, man? And so he proceeds to clean himself up. The dude is still talking shit. He swings on my partner. Now, mind you, my partner, was been, he came in the bathroom to take a piss. He swings on my partner. My partner digs off in his ass, puts hands on him. Security comes in, finds him putting hands on this motherfucker that kicked him in the ass while he's peeing. They arrest him, he has to get bailed out. He has to go back to court. The dude wants to press charges. My homeboy ends up having to pay roughly $12,000, $13,000 in restitution for this motherfucker that kicked him in the ass because he whooped his ass. See, that's how fucked up the system is. Punk motherfuckers, man, can't handle their business, so they wanna go and press charges and be like little bitches. That's why we can't throw hands no more. And the guys to throw hands all the time. You know, if you get me, you get me. If I get you, I get you. But nowadays, motherfuckers want to go and tell the popos and press charges, get the courts involved. Then you got to hire an attorney. So whooping somebody's ass might cost you 
20, 30, 40, 50,000. Some fucking bullshit. So, hey man, try to avoid it. Think about what I'm telling you right now. It's not worth it, man. You don't want to have to spend a bunch of money for whooping somebody's ass. And, you know, if you can get away with it, hey, you know, that's on you. But for the most part, man, a lot of times you got witnesses, you got these fucking cell phones, motherfucker war star your ass, it'll go viral, you're going to catch a case. It ain't worth it. I'm out.